Hello there, welcome in to this latest edition of the SAU Baseball Coaches Show. I'm Daniel Gagos, joined alongside my head baseball coach Justin Pettigrew. And coach, uh, since our last Coaches Show with you, your team has really gotten on a roll. Things are starting to click offensively. Uh, you've gotten some great starting pitching performances on the weekend. But we'll go ahead and we'll take it back a little bit to, to recap where we were at when we were last, last left off. Big series on the weekend at home against Oklahoma Baptist. Uh, they were picked to win the conference in the preseason. Last year, their first year in the league, very good, high-quality team. Much of the same, a lot of the same guys back, particularly in their, in their starting rotation, even with the addition of their Game 2 guy who we'll hit on. Talk us through that series, because Game 1, it was, it was a grind. Their, their number one, Ginny Parra, really kind of holding the Mule Riders offense down for a little bit, able to tie it up, and then the game leaks over to extra innings. You get the exciting walk-up home run from Jacob Richardson. And then that's not the end of it. You, you play a second game of a doubleheader then, build off the momentum to take game two, leads into game three, which you ultimately take the series. So just kind of walk us through that series, the ups and downs, and what came out of it. All right, first off, Bobby does a wonderful job over, over there. Uh, last year I felt like they were probably the most talented team that we played, and then this year they're going to be, if not the most talented, they'll probably be right up there at the top. Um, glad we don't have to see Parra again. I'm not going to lie. Matter of fact, I told him that uh, after the game. I uh, hated to see anybody, as far as pitching-wise, lose that game just because it was such a special game that you, you know, don't get to see very often. Um, but fortunately, you know, Wells was right there matching him pitch for pitch. And then, of course, you know, Larson comes in and does a great job to, to hold us there, to keep him down. And then, you know, we play small ball to get the first run. Corey Gallegos does a great job laying the soft bunt down the first baseline, uh, scoring the first run, and then, you know, we send it into extras. And... Uh, of course, Rich gets the big blow, but a guy that kind of goes as an unsung hero in that game is Josie Langston. You know, he started a couple rallies for us and got some things going, and he kind of flies under the radar because he's not a middle order guy, but he's done some big things for us this year. You know, again, we talked about that spilling into game two to where if it would have been, let's say, the, the normal Friday night, you play the one game and then you got the double the next day, the emotions of a walk-off home run, to a credit to your team, you didn't let that be a letdown. Um, and rolling into game two, and it, it may on the other side have been a little bit of a shock to Oklahoma Baptist where they weren't able to bounce back. It wound up being a 5-1 win for you. Uh, another outstanding pitching performance, Dalton Alguin, he got co-pitcher of the week for the performance. 12 strikeouts in just seven innings. That game was scheduled to go seven anyways. Talk about his performance and really what he's done to this point of the year. You know, going into it, we knew that we were going to have a tough matchup on our hands. Uh, I mean, their arm, I think he'd given up one run in 20 innings. Um, and then, but we knew we knew we had a guy on the mound that could match it if he went out and gave us his best performance. And to date, I would say that it was his best performance. Went out, kind of done what he's done all year. He's just gotten a little bit better each time he's went out. And like you said, 12 strikeouts in seven innings, and was really completely dominant until the last inning. They laid down a bunt, and had a little bloop here, and then of course they scratched a run across. But he was completely dominant for his for his outing and. You know, offensively, uh, Trevor Rucker got it started with a big, with a big blow. You know, hitting a tank. Uh, I guess it was the third inning, I think, and uh, kind of put them on their heels a little bit. And then Fontenot hits a double. Trevanian hits a double, and we're able to score. You know, a couple runs there, and then of course, you know, extending the lead late and going into the last inning five to nothing, and then now again shutting it down. Then into game three, you're in a position to sweep the series, and you know, we'll talk. You talk each weekend, every team in the conference. The first prior, first objective is to win the series, get at least two wins. If you can put yourself in position for a series sweep, then obviously you want to go for it. But nobody really, I don't think, goes into a weekend saying, we're going to sweep, it's no doubt, we got to sweep, those kinds of things. But you're in the position to get the sweep against Oklahoma Baptist. Things are going well early on in the game, build a lead, and then they start chipping back a little bit. Eventually tie it, it's 8-8 eight, eight going into the bottom of the eighth, and then you explode for six runs, your offense does to kind of separate and come away with that one. What did you get from your team in that moment, knowing you had a lead, lost it, but then were able to extend it and get the win? You know, one thing, uh, when you show up and the wind's blowing out like it was, we knew that it wasn't going to be a low-scoring game. Uh, Tabor actually threw well. Uh, just made maybe one or two mistakes, and they took advantage. Of course, we took advantage of some mistakes, but I like the way our team fought back. We've, we've been a, a team that really... I wouldn't say laid down, but we haven't done a great job when we've gotten behind. But the last, you know, four or five games or so, we've done a little bit better job of chipping away and being able to put some pressure on guys. Um, and of course, you know, just extending innings, putting pressure on the defense, on the pitchers, and then we get to a situation where, you know, late in the game, they came back, we come back, and all of a sudden, I think we're seven to seven or something like that, and 
Font know it. Of course, it's a grand slam, big blow right there to, to give us the lead, and then of course we extend from there. You know, and then that three game series puts you at eight and one in conference play through the first three weekends. A great start to the conference, uh, to the conference part of the season. You're in second place, one game back of Arkansas Tech, who who is unbeaten. But then also too, obviously improved your win loss record this this coming week. Back in the national rankings, uh, top 25, number 25 team in the collegiate baseball poll. Very reputable poll, receiving votes in the, in the baseball writers as well. So starting to kind of get that, that national momentum back in recognition. For your first year as a head coach, I know you've been with the program through many successes before that, number one national ranking um, in a, a few years back. What does that mean for you in the position of head coach to get that recognition? For me, it's, it's nice just for... I guess our players being rewarded for what they're doing every single day. Uh, just someone showing appreciation for how they're playing the game and going about their business. And, and it's for them. I mean, it's not for me. You know, I hadn't picked up a baseball in a long time. I mean, it's been a while since I've actually played a game. So my job is, you know, just try to get our coaching staff and myself to prepare our guys, you know, going into the game, put a lineup up there and let them get after it. And uh, they have a lot of fun. And, you know, of course, the recognition that they've given being back in the polls. Uh, it's not where we want to be, you know, at the end of the year, and really the polls are nice, but they don't really matter. We have bigger goals as far as that's, you know, concerned for the end of the year for conference, for regionals and the World Series. Um, but it is nice to be recognized, and our guys, you know, work extremely hard. Yeah, you get out of that weekend, a lot of momentum there. Finally get a chance to play midweek games, especially at home. Weather has dictated otherwise, and even, even this week had to push back from Tuesday to Wednesday, but able to get in the game against a, a very good program perennially. Uh, Louisiana uh, LSU Shreveport um, they were NAIA ranked number 13 they were off to a great start to their year as well and uh, really midweek games you know you never know what you're going to get as far as pitching and hitting wound up being a slugfest uh, a, lot, a lot of walks issued on both sides but your team able to come out on top talk us through that game and you know what you saw offensively because there was 18 hits season high in hits and runs scored and then too the pitching uh, you were able to see a lot of arms go out there in different scenarios where they haven't had a chance to be able to pitch in live competition. Right. Obviously, when you start talking about 16 runs and 18 hits, uh, our offense did a wonderful job. Uh, being able to funnel the ball into the strike zone when they did make mistakes, we took advantage and put some good swings on them. We did a great job running the bases. I think Blake Hall had four stolen bases, um, had a couple of other first to third and scored on some balls where we did a really good job of taking advantage of some of the opportunities that we had. Uh, pitching wise, of course, it wasn't a good night. I mean, let's let's be honest, it wasn't a good night. But the good thing is, it's a team sport, and the offense was there to to pick us up. There will be games where the offense isn't clicking, and the pitching will have to do it. So, it's nice that to know that the other side of the ball has us taken care of. You know, now we'll, we'll project to this upcoming weekend back in conference play. You're going on the road to Southern Nazarene. Um, it's a team. You look at the standings, and you, you know, fans may want to point out, okay, these these are games, you know, that, that you should go out and get. But obviously, we know. The competition when it when it rises up and you go on the road and everything that's associated with that, just talk us through maybe preview a little bit of the series coming up at Southern Nazarene, knowing where you're at in the conference standings and wanting to continually improve. Uh, first off, it's been a little bit of cluster with the weather, of course. Uh, you know, getting a call as far as okay, we're going to be able to move to Sunday Monday. Then oh, we're not going to be able to move to Sunday Monday. And then uh, last night we finished our game. I think it was 10:18 p.m. I look at my phone and we get the okay to move it to Sunday, Monday, so I'm calling hotels and bus companies and everything else trying to get everything changed around. Uh, but when you talk about, you know, any anytime you play on the road, you know it's going to be an environment that you're going to have to be prepared for. doesn't matter what the records are, the way our conference is, there's no weekend off. And that's the thing I try to tell our guys, don't look at the record, don't look at the opponent. Let's take care of the process. Let's go about our business. Make sure we take care of the game or take care of the baseball and do the things that we're supposed to do. And then we'll look at the scoreboard after everything takes care of. It. Yeah, and as you mentioned there, uh, the the series was originally scheduled for Friday, Saturday. Rain coming through pretty much our entire region <laughs> yeah. uh, this coming weekend, especially Saturday. And so the series is shifting to Sunday, Monday. Still playing the double on Sunday, and then a single game on Monday. Correct? Yes, definitely, definitely glad to have that. I didn't know if we were going to be able to get the double in on Sunday. If we we're going to have to. You know, move it around, but hopefully they get you know don't get hit so hard that we have to make a change again. So we appreciate it very much for your time again. That's head baseball coach Justin Pettigrew. As we just said, uh, the the weekend series has been shifted a little bit. It'll be played Sunday, Monday, with a doubleheader on Sunday, beginning at 1 p.m. The final game of the series Monday afternoon, starting at noon. Be sure to check MealRiderAthletics.com for all your pre and post game coverage of that weekend series. Coach, we appreciate it. Best of luck. Thanks a lot, Daniel.